Lamar Jackson came on Louisville's campus as the backup to senior star quarterback Malik Cunningham. Knowing that he was being prepared to take over the offense in the following season, Lamar worked week in and week out during practice to prove himself as being ready on the scout team, and they even put him as part of some special packages on offense where they use his speed on jet sweeps to get outside of the defense. Against Kentucky, they showed the exact same look, putting Lamar in motion, but Lamar pulled the ball and was able to deliver this crazy pass across the entire field, helping lead Louisville to take an early lead and eventually pull out the W against their hated rivals. Lamar's first real time at QB came against the Charlotte 49ers in a blowout where on his first play, he took a design quarterback run up the middle all the way to the house, making a defender miss along the way for his first ever collegiate touchdown. As a number 22 ranked team in the nation, they qualified for the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, but they ended up taking a pretty bad L to Oklahoma State and the entire nation was pretty surprised where after the game, Malik Cunningham declared that he wasn't going to the draft and instead was going to pursue a career in professional raw dogging. Lamar made amazing strides in the offseason. Heading into his sophomore year, he was now QB1 and he was playing against the Kentucky Wildcats. The game started probably as bad as possible with him eating a quick sack and then immediately following that in the next possession, underthrowing this pass for a quick interception. This was probably the worst way to start out against your rivals. Down 14, he was looking for the end zone right here, but a drop pass receiver was so frustrating for Lamar in the offense. It wasn't until the third quarter that he was finally able to get something going, finding the blown coverage right here and hitting this corner out deep to Wiggins. Wiggins made a move in the open field and was able to score a touchdown. In the fourth quarter, they were down 11 and Lamar was looking to lead a comeback. He rolled to the right side, looking for literally anything before just taking himself, looking to make everything happen because he didn't think he could rely on his teammates. Rolling to the left side, he did find a blown coverage once again over the top and hit this post route to Huggins Bruce for a huge touchdown over the Wildcats. The defense came up big and Lamar got to keep a read option, looking to make everybody miss. Again, he had no faith in his teammates, and as time was winding down, he was looking to win the game himself. He just barely got the first down right there, dropped back, 13 seconds left now, hit this drag over the middle. Ford was stood up, though, just before the goal line. Eight seconds left, Lamar handed it off to his running back, who got stopped short. One second left now. They read motion right to left. Ford looks like a wide receiver screen. No, Lamar's going to take it up in the middle. Lamar got blown up. This was such a bad sign for the season. They just dropped the game to their biggest rival. We visited Penn State the following week, and this was a nice bounce back game as Lamar was able to get the ground game going quickly, and we were able to take a huge lead. He showed off his wheels and his ball carry vision with that cutback right there. Following week, we played the Bearcats, and things looked awesome early. Lamar showed that it was going to take more than one person to tackle him in the open field as he broke this kid's ankle and was off to the races. We were able to take a 21-point lead in the first half, and then as if his name was Trace Vesorley, he threw this ball on a dime for an easy touchdown to put him up 28 but the defense managed to not be able to get stops and they were finding their way back into the game. Lamar was doing all he could on the ground as he was making defenders miss per usual and outrunning everybody showing off his elite speed but he really couldn't do anything on defense and he had to watch from the sidelines as time and time again the Bearcat offense was able to score in the red zone. He was looking to close it out but ended up eating a giant sack on this third and one in the fourth quarter and with just a two-point lead finally the Louisville defense was able to come up big with the stop on the goal line and the Bearcats to win the game, but Lamar knew that this should never have been close. And when the team traveled to Philadelphia to play Temple, drop passes, missed blocking assignments like this, and even when Lamar had an opportunity with a clean pocket, he was overthrowing balls, and this was a team that was on the verge of collapse. Louisville was looking bad. Lamar tried to lead a comeback and rally the troops, but he fumbled near the goal line, and that was GG's that put an end to any hope for a great season for Louisville. With almost no hope going into this game against number five ranked UCF, Lamar ended up channeling pretty much every last bit of talent he had, delivering an opening dot on their first drive of the first quarter, and then coming in clutch with a big rushing touchdown. He was going to put the team on his back, regardless of how many drop passes there might be, and regardless of how poorly his teammates may play. They ran a fake screen, and then we were able to get a receiver open on the top of the defense. Huggins Bruce was able to score a touchdown and Lamar and the offense was putting up tons of points. He was running quarterback draws and again outrunning the defense as he was the fastest player on the field. Lamar seemed to get better as the game went on and after this play action he was able to find this corner out deep on the right sideline to help tie the game up and in overtime all they needed was a touchdown and two point conversion to win. Lamar delivered this dot in the middle of the field. He finished this game with nine touchdowns and they upset number five ranked UCF. You'd think this would be a turning point for Louisville and the offense and for Lamar in general but in the fourth quarter against South Florida 
Florida. They were down by one point. Lamar kept the ball in a play action, looked over the middle, found nothing, threw a defender off him, but then eventually fumbled. UCF was able to pick this ball up and score a touchdown off of it, effectively ending the game. And after such a good win over UCF, they dropped a, such a winnable game. While Lamar was happy that he was in the final five of the Heisman race, it was annoying to see that the team qualified for just the New Mexico Bowl. And yes, they were able to beat East Carolina, but it, it, it's the New Mexico Bowl, bro. It's not anything worthwhile, and Lamar knew that he had to get out of Louisville. So when Dan Lanning called an offer from the starting quarterbacks by Oregon, he accepted, and this team was stacked. One of the best college football teams of all time. They opened up the season against Michigan State, where they did pretty much whatever they wanted to do on both sides of the ball. Lamar was determined to prove that he could be a national championship starting quarterback. With all the doubters last year talking about his throwing ability, it wasn't the Spartans' fault that they were the first people to have to deal with it, but... It was nonetheless they had to. Rushing touchdown after rushing touchdown, Lamar finished game number one against MSU with over 400 total yards and five touchdowns. And when they played Cal and it ended up being kind of a close game, it didn't feel like the lull that would happen at Louisville where a close game was just waiting for someone else to make a mistake. Lamar knew that he had teammates he could count on and that gave him so much extra energy. He danced around the defense all the way down to about the 15 yard line before ultimately helping punch it in on his legs on this little boot to the right side. And the defense was able to get an actual stop, meaning that they won a close game, and it wasn't all Lamar. Lamar and the Ducks pretty much made light work of whoever they played after this, as Stanford stood literally no chance. Lamar was able to both get it going in the pass game and in the run game, and with the high-level running back, he wasn't afraid to be able to hand that ball off either. Georgia State, I mean, come on, you think Georgia State had a chance against Lamar? Come on, boys. Come on. Especially not when Lamar's feeling like that. Vibes were so high, and in a very rare opportunity here, the number one ranked Ohio State Buckeyes were coming to Oregon to play the Ducks. Lamar started off with this dot to the tight end on the right side, and he was showing that he was ready to be disciplined. That was until this play action led to a pick over the middle, thinking his tight end had a step on a linebacker when he didn't, though Buckeye brought it all the way back to about the 25. And in the third quarter, the Ducks were down 21, but Lamar was not going to be phased. He knew that he had an opportunity. Rolling to the right side, he delivered an absolute beam ski deep down the right side with a laser rocket arm. They score a touchdown, and Lamar had an opportunity here. 28 to 31 to lead a money drive for the Ducks and to take over the number one consensus spot right here. Found the corner on the right side, able to get a nice gain right there. And Lamar taking the read option to the right side. He has one buck out of miss. He throcks himself through him down to the six yard line. Third and goal now. A miscue on a trick play holds the Duck offense to just three points with about 30 seconds left. And in typical Buckeye fashion, they found a way to get over top the Duck defense for a touchdown meaning that Lamar had one final play down seven to find a way to tie the game up. Lamar took it up the left side, but a backer got him in the backfield. And even though this was an L, this felt way better than all the L's at Louisville. Oregon had their get right game against Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffaloes, where Coach Prime, although he said he was coming a lot, there was no come to be had in this game as the Ducks absolutely blew the brakes out of the Buffalo. The fact that Lamar was even in at this point was hilarious, but again, he was making a huge showing for a Heisman race, and in the conference championship, we were going to be playing USC, who had beaten early in the year. Lamar, up seven, was making the correct read. And again, it felt so good to have other players that could make plays. And just like that, Lamar and the Ducks became Pac-12 champions. Although after the game, we found out he came up second in the Heisman race behind a running back named Nate Noel from Appalachian State. But none of that mattered as we had made the college football playoffs and we were playing the U of Miami. And Lamar started the game out in signature Lamar fashion in front of the entire nation as he rolled to the left side, had one defender to make miss he juked him out easily for an easy touchdown and then showed off his finesse finding this laser over the middle of the field on a deep dig route at halftime we were winning 35 to 6 but somehow Miami and the Hurricanes found a way to come back and only up seven in the fourth quarter Lamar was able to find his wide receiver Franklin for a huge touchdown to help put the game away and to send the Ducks to the national championship against the Ohio State Buckeyes for a rematch of the century. The Natty started off with Lamar looking for this flood concept. He didn't have the underneath. He didn't have the deep route, but he had the corner route to Thornton all the way down to the 20-yard line. The counter bash from the goal line, he was able to take himself. No reason to pitch it. Lamar scored that. And deep into the third quarter now, Ohio State was actually winning. So Lamar once again showing off his passing ability before taking a quarterback keeper for another touchdown. 
deep into the fourth now. The Buckeyes were able to take the lead. And with a seven-point deficit, Lamar broke the huddle. He was looking to tie this game in front of the entire world. He pumped fake the screen, but nobody was there, and he ended up eating a sack. Third and 15, he checked it down to his halfback over the middle. Caldwell, he was able to make this a fourth and five. Game on the line right now. He was just looking to pick up the first down. He dropped back, looking over the middle. He was able to find an in route, just barely, almost out of the reach of his wide receiver. First and 10, nobody was open, so Lamar was looking to make a play. He rolled out to the right side in typical Lamar fashion, threw it off his back foot, but the throw went backwards, and a Buckeye was able to take it, scoop it for a score. And just like that, the Buckeyes took a two-possession lead. They had three timeouts, so the Ducks weren't out of this yet. Lamar threw off his back foot. Deep downfield was intercepted by a Buckeye safety, and that would be the nail in the coffin in Lamar's career as he came up just short in the national championship. And Lamar, again, not able to get it done against the Buckeyes. Lamar declared for the draft where he was taken with the second overall pick by the Raiders. If you enjoyed that video, check out this one right here where I recreated Tim Tebow's entire college career.